Yeah. yeah. Jump in, jump in, jump in. Them boys up to something. They just. What is going on, guys? Fifth, you here with a brand new video. And with today's video, I really want to talk about the highly anticipated middleweight championship matchup between the last style bit and Bender Izzyra Adesanya versus the eraser Paulo Costa. Now this is going to be a very exciting matchup, not for me, but for all UFC fans, all MMA fans all around the world. This matchup was highly anticipated. It was supposed to go down earlier this year, but Paulo Costa ended up sustaining an injury from his last fight against um, Yoel Romero. And because of that, he was sidelined for a very, very long time. But now Israel Adesanya is the champion. He will be defending his championship for the second time against Paulo Costa. And these two really do not like each other. These guys always get in each other's necks. They always make fun of each other. They're always talking trash. This is something that we all like to see, especially in a championship matchup leading up to a championship fight, two fighters we don't like each other, that really want to hurt each other. Because we all know it's going to be action from the beginning of the bell all the way to the end of the bell. Even now, myself, I do not believe that this fight will go the full five rounds. Someone will be KO'd, in my opinion. Someone's going to be going lights out. And um, it can be either guy because Paulo Costa likes to go forward. He likes to drive forward. He likes to dictate the pace of the actual fight. Israel Adesanya is this very same way. He's a very good counterpuncher. He's got some very good footwork. He has more than 70 wins in his professional kickboxing career. So he is one of the most elite strikers that the UFC has ever had. And he likes to pick his spots uh, very well. Obviously, he did have some trouble dealing with the likes of Kelvin Gastelum. But he was able to shake off some of that rust and beat Robert Whitaker very convincingly. Um, then he was able to go into a matchup against Joe Romero, which is one of the most boring matchups I had ever seen in my whole entire life. But it's definitely going to change when he does face Paulo Costa because Paulo has said many, many times that he's not going to wait around just like Yoel did. He's going to go for uh, the finish. He's going to go straight for Israel Adesanya, and he's going to try to finish him inside of two to three rounds, get him out of there as fast as he possibly can, and knock him out with his skinny legs. Now... Those skinny legs do have some power, though, um, as we've seen in the past. Whenever Israel Adesanya does throw a leg kick, it was with uh, vero uh, for some voracious uh, velocity and uh, with a lot of power behind it. Israel can hit you with a calf kick. He can hit you with a body kick. He can hit you with a leg kick. He can hit you with a spinning kick. All different types of kicks within his arsenal. I can't say the same thing for Boca China. Um... I do know that he can throw some pretty nasty leg kicks, but I think he's going to talk. He's going to be talking more with his fists during this fight. Uh, Israel is obviously going to be moving around uh, pretty smoothly, evading some of uh, the punches that Paulo Costa is going to be throwing. He does like to throw in bunches and punches. Uh, that's one thing that can be very dangerous for Paulo Costa because Israel Adesanya is a very good counter puncher. And when he does get the chance, he will strike and he will pick your sweet spots. Then one thing that I do have trouble with uh, with Paulo Costa is that he's never been in a five-round fight before within the UFC. And he was getting very, very tired during that Yoel Romero fight towards the third round. That's where I believe that Yoel did some of his best work. And that's why I believe that Yoel actually won the fight against Paulo Costa. Paulo's gas tank was not there that day. And as we all know, when Paulo ended up watching that Yoel Romero versus Israel Adesanya matchup, he was big. He was chunky. He looked like he weighed about 230 to 235 pounds. Now, if you've seen some of his videos, he's obviously shredded a lot of that weight. He's getting close to the 285 pound limit. And he looks like he's going to be fairly in shape. It looks like he's going to be in some of the best shape of his life when September 26th does come around. Now, where is the fight going to take place? Well, since the majority of the fighters on that card are already looking to be New Zealanders and, and uh, Australians, it definitely 
favors that the fight is going to take place on Fight Island. Dana has confirmed multiple times that the UFC will be going back to Fight Island, and they will be going there in September and October. So basically by the end of September, which is when this fight is going to take place, the UFC is most likely going to have this fight take place on Fight Island, Abu Dhabi, Yas Island, and the United Arab Emirates, uh, which is actually a very good thing because for me, Mob, uh, it will definitely help the fighters out a lot. Uh, you and Dana and the UFC are are all are also going to make some huge differences. Um, that they wanted to capitalize on from their first trip to uh, Yas Island, and I believe that this trip to Abu Dhabi is going to be a whole lot smoother than the last one. The UFC is going to capitalize on their mistakes. They're going to make a lot of great corrections, and it's definitely going to be a whole lot smoother than last time. Because the last time was basically a prototype. It was the first time they were going there. First time they were hosting events in this man-made uh, arena that was literally built a couple months ago. This all came together from scratch. So to come back to Fight Island with a card like this is going to be humongous. There are a lot of international fighter uh, international fighters on this card, which is another big hint that the fight will take place on Fight Island. It has not been 100% confirmed yet, but... All odds are likely that it will take place on Fight Island, which I'm very, very excited about. And even though that it won't take place here in the United States, it's still mostly going to be going on here on the East Coast at 10 p.m. with the main card, 8 p.m. with the prelims, and 6 p.m. with the early prelims, depending on uh, how many fights are going to be on that card. Now, if you're on the West Coast, obviously the main card is going to take place at 7 the prelims are going to take place at 6. Early prelims are going to take place at about 4 or 3 p.m. in the afternoon Pacific time. So I'm definitely looking forward to this fight. The key is the victory, obviously, for Israel Adesanya is to keep on moving, um, utilize that body movement, the head movement, and definitely hit Paulo Costa in the body because the more you hit him in the body, the more he's going to slow down. Also, overwhelm him with a barrage of punches whenever he does get the chance, then tire, and tire him out. Don't try to finish him within the first two rounds. Get him inside of the third round where he gasses out the most, and that's where you're going to finish him right there. For Paulo Costa, try to take down Israel Adesanya. We all know that Israel Adesanya isn't a well-known ground fighter, and then when he does get to the ground, he doesn't have a, uh, a lot of weapons when he's down there. His jiu-jitsu is pretty underrated, but it's still not on par with some of the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu artists in the UFC. Also, uh, pa Israel Adesanya does do a really good job when it comes to getting back on his feet after a takedown. So Paulo's going to have to take him down and uh, definitely make him stay down there as well. Uh, keep him down there and uh, try to utilize some, uh, some of his work on the ground, try to get Israel on a crucifix, a crucifix position because that's where we've seen some of these fights so far in the UFC and on the Contender Series and so far uh, very recently. So if Paul Costa could be able to get him into a crucifix position, I guarantee you that Israel Adesanya would have no idea on how to get out of that position and that would be a pretty good win for Boracina in order to get that championship. If he cannot, um, if he cannot keep him on the ground, obviously try to overwhelm him uh, with some punches and try to get him against the fe uh, against the cage and definitely work some uh, nice bur uh, dirty boxing against the fence, some uh, some knees, and also try to beat on Israel Adesanya's legs with some calf kicks just because of how skinny his legs are. And whenever he's going to throw a kick to the body. Uh, at the moment of impact, try grabbing it, and that way yeah, Israel only has one leg to work with, so he's going to be unbalanced. Sweep that other leg that is um, obviously not caught, and you get the takedown like that, and try to get on his back, work some ground and pound. Uh, there's an infinite amount of possibilities that can happen with this play, but I'm just glad that it's finally going down. It's very close, happening in uh, September 26, almost a month away. Uh, most likely going to be on Fight Island, so a lot of things to look forward to. A lot of great fight nights to look going uh, look forward to before this pay per view does take place. But it's definitely one of the most anticipated cards of the year. So I'm looking forward to watching it. I hope you guys are as well. And I will definitely put some more videos out there. And I appreciate you guys for watching. So later.